What up everybody? It's Reed here, long time no vlog, right? I'm out here in sunny California, although not too sunny today. Uh, out here in California for the Nogi World Championships. You know, almost the end of the year, almost 2018 is, is in the books, but before we do it, we gotta crown some more world champions. We've been talking about this event all week long, the Nogi World Championships. This year in particular, it is incredibly Stack. We've been talking about it, like I said, all week. Gordon Ryan is in there, Cyborg is in there. The lightweight and middleweight divisions are absolutely stacked. I'm super excited to be here, but today, the three-day tournament today is only blue belts and masters black belts. So let's jump inside, jump inside the arena and get some highlights. That's why you're here, right? Let's do it. down there, all 12 mats you can watch live on flowgrappling.com. Uh, but 2,500 competitors coming out here this weekend vying for a Nogi World title. So a lot of guys, this is a huge tournament, stacked over three days. But today, today's just blue belts. We've got masters, black belts coming up a little bit later, but the majority of today is blue belts. And now, man, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention at, at all recently, but these blue belts are not your average blue belts anymore. These guys have killer technique. They've been competing for years, and their jujitsu is is at the top of the game. You know, blue belts, it, it means something different these days. So really what I want to go down and do today is find out who these, who these blue belts are, who these really great blue belts are. There's a lot of big teams out there, and these blue belts are fantastic. I'm telling you, they got crisp technique. So let's go down there see who we can find and uh, see if we can uncover kind of the, the next big thing these, these blue belts are gonna be uh, champions at purple belt champions at, at brown belt and potentially even champions at black belt so these guys really are the next big thing let's go see who we can find and uh, let's do it let's find the next big thing me and you I'm right straight to Miami. I've been training with me for about a year, a year, six months. A year and six months. The most committed kid in the school, you know what I mean? Trains all day long pretty much. I have to kick him out of the gym sometimes. First worlds, first time competing worlds, first time competing a big event here. You know what I mean? And it's amazing for him to actually come here and accomplish it. So, um, again, man, like uh, it's beautiful to see how um, work, hard work, pays off. You know. Super proud. The first Cuban champion right here. Huh? It, 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 it was huh? a tough match. You were down, I believe, on points. He was, yeah, he was down points. He had a really tough day. You know what I mean? Like he had five fights. None of the fights he started winning. You know what I mean? <laughs> the six fights. Six fights. None of the fights started winning. But you know, he has a, a, a really offensive kind of kind of game. You know, he goes after, he goes for submissions. You know what I mean? And um, now in the final, he was losing 5-0. And I think the, the opponent didn't respect as much as should and got caught in an armbar. Again, man, you know what I mean? Like, uh, this is the world, you know what I mean? Legends are being made on the, those mats. You know, and this is the, this is the start of a, a new journey for a new champion. So, super proud. Oh, 
I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is that they make this enormous distinction between blue belts that are competing and winning and black belts. And there is distinction, but it's it's technical, but it's largely experience. I think that the, the kids who are winning, you know, the guys who are winning at blue belt level, there's a very good chance that they're going to be winning at the purple belt level. A very big chance if they win at the purple, they're going to win at the brown and so on. You can follow these guys. I, 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 I brag about spotting these guys all in their blue belts. Like, I have an eye for it. Like, I know the kids that are very dominant as blue belts. Give them four or five years, they're going to be dominant as, as black belts. And it's a pattern, right? You get used to winning. What it does, it builds your confidence. Right? You win a blue belt. I can win as a purple belt. Because I remember, like, when I did well as a purple belt, I'd get my brown belt on, and I'd walk into the brown belt division. I'm going to kill these guys. Because your confidence is through the roof, and your experience is there. So I think one mistake that a lot of instructors make, because they're, they're worried about being accused of sandbagging, is that they move people too quickly. And my whole demeanor is, not everyone's blue belt, purple belt level is the same. No one, there's no such thing as a universal standard for a purple belt. There's only your own standard. Your standard is different than mine. So when I see someone with a lot of potential, I want them to reach their maximum potential on that belt before I move them on. I'm not comparing him to the gym, I'm comparing him to his own standard. Which is hard to do, but I think when you do that, you create an athlete with a career. Yeah, so Vitor Perez is one of our top students at the gym. Uh, he's originally from Brazil. He spends about half the year training with his father in Santa Barbara do Oeste, and then the other half training with us. Mainly like the main, like the jiu-jitsu season, he's with us. We're looking over for a seminar. Great kid. Like I, I try to help out some of these kids. I was helped a lot as a teenager. I think I made it in jiu-jitsu because I had people when I was 16, 17 years old who believed in me. So whenever I find someone young who has a lot of potential and is hungry and has good character, I'm gonna do my best to extend that help and um, you know open the door. So Victor's been living with me for the last few months, and uh, he's awesome, man. Great kid, lots of potential. I wouldn't be surprised if he won the Open. He just turned 18, and he's a monster. Like it's one of those things. Every now and then, I gotta give him like, I gotta give my very, very best guys at the gym to hang with the kids. So he's a blue belt, but his level is through the roof. He can hang with almost any black belt, really. But how, how was his day today? Did you know how many matches he had? He, had a great he won four matches, I believe, all by submission. Uh, he went against a teammate in the semifinal, which was unfortunate. But you know, who, someone who Chris Oliva, who also had a lot of potential, probably would have closed the bracket with them uh, had they not met in the semifinal. And um, yeah, so I think four matches out, all by submission. But like, I'm not even that surprised, man, because I see what he does at the gym. So it's just one of those things. I'm expecting him to win by submission because I know of his potential. So. Yeah, so he won the finals. He had uh, three matches, three submissions. Uh, his first match was a quick kagatame, arm triangle strangle. His second match was an uh, arm bar, and his third match was an arm bar. Um, and he was up like a massive amount of points on uh, on all occasions. Um, so, not bad for being a blue belt for like a month. Um, you know, he's very tough. He comes to Hendos all the time. He's like a freak ath like athlete, 230 pounds. Um, wrestled the D3 for like, one year and wrestled his, his whole life coming up. Um, and. Uh, he, he competes. He's a good, good competitor. He goes out. He doesn't give a fuck, and uh, he looks to go out and he finishes finishes matches. So it's uh, it's gonna be a rough couple of years if he keeps training. Yeah, I mean the, the, the thing. Oh yeah, everyone's fighting for it. Um, the level, of course, every year is improving, as it should be. Um, you know, it's our job as a, as a whole, as a sport, to make sure that the generations, as they go, and every year by year, that we get better. And, uh, you know, the blue belts now, some of the blue belts now look like they can be black belts. Um, so, 
that only fooled me because I have a tall, I only have blue belt rash guards on. But you know, a lot of the blue and purple belts are, are getting very tough. Um, so it's always always fun for me to watch um, to see uh, see some things that impress me and see some mistakes that people could easily fix. So it's fun watching in jiu-jitsu when you when you actually know what's going on and you try to diagnose you know every match. Wow, there's three names you are going to want to keep an eye on, I promise you. Uh, three blue belts who look like absolute killers out there today. But uh, let, let's keep it going, let's jump. We got black belts coming up next, so let's get to some highlights. Right, great day in the books here. Day one, Nogi World Championships, blue belts, masters, black belts. We saw plenty of action, plenty of great action, but tomorrow, tomorrow it gets even better. Tomorrow, we got black belts going uh, all day, pretty much it starts 9.30 a.m., I believe, and it's going till late. We're gonna be doing all the divisions through the quarterfinals and the absolute division, black belt absolute division. It's gonna be absolutely crazy. I can't wait for it. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog and I hope to see you guys tomorrow.